Greetings Zimbabwe, Africa and the world. Welcome to In Conversation with Trevor, a show where we go beyond the headlines and beyond the sensational. Today we are in conversation with the chairperson of the Anti-Corruption Commission, Justice Lois Matanda Moyo. <music> Justice Lois Matanda Moyo, welcome to In Conversation with Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. You've been on the, in the hot seat for less than a month. How, how hot is the seat? The seat is quite hot, Trevor. Try and unpack that for <laughs> us. What does that mean? What it means is that uh, when I came onto that seat, the public had lost confidence with the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. And coming into such seats has always been hot. And the public has so much expectations from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, and therefore the city becomes what? Are you intimidated? Are you frightened? Not at all. Not mm -hmm. at all. T tell I'm us about that. How, how confident frightened. are you that you're going to meet the public expectations? I'm quite confident looking at my background. I've come from a very long way. I rose through the system. I, bec I, I joined the system as a public prosecutor. I've prosecuted before. From prosecution, I moved to the civil side of the law, and I was in the civil division of the Attorney General's office, and I rose up to the ranks, up to the director of civil division for some time. Then I moved to be the director of public prosecutions before moving to the bench. So that, that, that answers the question, who is uh, Lois Ma, Ma, Matanda Moya? Um, let, let me get into a, a, a matter that um, you, you're, you're married to the foreign yes, minister. Yes, yes. You've got a lovely family. Very, Did very. Do you want to share with us okay. your, your family, how many kids you have? Um, okay, we, we've got two children of our own, two boys. One just graduated this year with a degree in software engineering, so we're quite excited. The other one is uh, doing lower sixth at the moment, the two boys. But uh, I've got a sister who passed on in 2004. She left four children, two boys and two girls. I have taken those in as well. So those are our children again, whom we are looking after. Mm. And the other girl, yeah, last year she had nine A's. To all Congratulations. Level. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So you are a mother. Yes, I'm a mother. I'm a wife. wife. You are justice. Yes. That's a busy life. Do you have, um, people talk about work, life, balance. Do you have that? Yes, I do have that. I've got time to go to my son's schools. I look at their books. I talk to the teachers. I've got time to cook for my family. I prepare the meals once in a while. We have meals together. Oh, yeah. I've what's got a what's your favorite meal? Uh, for traditional for my family. Mm -hmm. my, my husband is traditional. He likes his... Uh, Rio sadza and everything, but the boys will not take that. <laughs> sadza, oxtail. Oxtail, sadza, road runner, mm. mm -hmm. nieve, that sort of stuff. Mm. Mm. Um, and I, I must ask, um, I'm struck by the double barreled name, um, Matanda Moyo. Moyo, it, yes. What's, what's the <laughs> meaning behind it? Behind that? it, yes. It's a double barreled name. Matanda is my maiden name, and Moyo is the married name. Why I put a double barreled name? is to show my independence. I am my own person. I don't want people to feel that I'm owned by anybody. That's why the double barrel name, my father's name and husband's name. That's, so that's, so that's you, you, you're stating your independence. My independence, in yes, and, definitely. And in a way answering people who say uh, you are married to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, does that hinder you or help you in your everyday job? Uh, being married to a minister, I think, is actually a positive thing because uh, most people would have been intimidated by ministers and people of high profile. But because uh, I've been married to one, I'm not intimidated by people of high office. So I will look at corruption from a corruption perspective, not from a point of who is involved. So I think from that aspect, it helps me a lot. So you're telling us that um, there won't be any sacred cows? Not at all. 
you're not going to all. follow the paper trail. I will follow the paper trail. And once there is evidence of corruption, those people will be brought to book. Your pronouncements since you uh, came into this job have, um, I think, given the public some idea that you mean business. How are you going to do things differently? You see, when I took over from the former Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, the office was not very well resourced. So I'm going to make sure that the office is well resourced so that it's able to carry out its mandate. I'm going to have the personnel trained so that the personnel themselves are able to deal with the matters that come before them. And we are not going to be given any instructions from anywhere. We are our own people. I will ensure that the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission is as in independent as expected. That's how we'll do our you, job so, differently. So you, you're sounding confident that you don't expect uh, political hurdles coming your way to stop you from doing your work? I don't expect any. And I also believe that by appointing a judge, the political leaders do not want to interfere with the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. Let's go to the issue that you've raised about resources. Where, uh, what's your budget like at the present moment to start with? At the present moment, we haven't received any budget allocation, but what we are doing is we are requesting what we want to work with. And so far, the government is actually coming to assist us mm -hmm. and giving us what we want. What are you requesting? Computers. We want to computerize our docket system. We want to manage our dockets compu with computerization. Because mm -hmm. you see, trying to manage dockets using the manual system is quite difficult. Papers can be lost through the way. But once you have papers computerized, then our job will be easier and our evidence more secure. So granted, this is the first month that you are in, in your job. Going forward, where do you see the biggest need for financial resources uh, arising from as far as the work is concerned? Um, the biggest will be the investigation department and the asset recovery department. That's where we want to put most of our resources in because that's where our mandate is. So in order to fulfill our mandate, we really need to resource that invest investigation department. T tell us about how do you handle a case from start to finish as briefly as possible? Who, who is the complainant? Uh, who brings the case before you and then the investigations and the ideal logical conclusion of the case? What does that look like? Okay. Anyone can bring a matter and complain. It can be a member of the public. It can be employees. From that company, it can be members of the executive, the political persons. So once a person makes a report, we then open a report book to say we've received this type of report. That matter is allocated to investigating officers, and then they find out whether there is evidence indeed. And once there is evidence, we compile that evidence and put it into a docket system, put in the witness statements. We want the documentary evidence, if any, and any other evidence that will assist in bringing the person to book or in uh, recovering the assets. And once that's done, we then look at the evidence itself and see whether any crime has been committed and we then uh, formulate our charges, then bring the person for a warned and cautioned statement if it's criminal in nature, if it's not criminal in nature and it's only civil, we then have our legal departments who then uh, brief out the matter for suing in the civil courts. So we have had instances prior to you coming in where high level politicians have been arrested um, and none of them actually have been, um, the cases have been gone to court and uh, nobody's actually been imprisoned for crimes that they allegedly committed. And it's that kind of thing that has um, affected the, the public's confidence in the Anti-Corruption Commission's uh, ability to carry out work. Has this, has this now changed with you coming in? Yes, with my coming in, I have actually insisted in thorough investigations. 
the investigation department will investigate the matter. Before it goes anywhere, it's vetted by our legal department here. And then the legal department here looks at all the other the, the other elements of the offence, whether they have been proven through the evidence in the docket. And once they are satisfied, that docket will be taken to the National Prosecuting Authority. Again, at the National Prosecuting Authority, before the docket is taken to court, they also look at the evidence. And if they feel that there is anything missing, they refer it back for investigations. So that's the system that we've put in place. So you, you are um, assuring the public that the investigating side has been sharpened, yes. that we're not going to ha have these cases of uh, what is now popularly known as uh, catch, catch and, and release. release. Exactly. So is this the end of catch and release? That's the end of catch and release. Okay. We've got a high level uh, case at the moment. Uh, I mean, it's a matter before before, before the, the court. Courts, yes. um, uh, one would then uh, say there's confidence that the evidence that have be, that has been unearthed is sufficient to um, uh, get a prosecution and, uh, and a determination in court. Yeah, according to us, the evidence that we are getting will be enough to secure so, a conviction. So let's deal Although with. Although we can't go into sure. details of absolutely. the matter because the matter is sub judice. Yeah, yes. Yes. The, the, let's deal with the issue of capacity mm -hmm. within your office. Yes. Um, uh, how comfortable are you with all aspects of uh, capacity within the Anti-Corruption Commission, your investigation capacity, um, and all uh, the deliverables that are required to, 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 to get a, a prosecution uh, successfully go through court? Uh, it's, uh, at the moment, it's average. But what we've done is uh, we are forming synergies with our local universities. We are coming up with training modules, and then they are going to be training our officers. I'm happy to say that training has already started. That's in-house training. We've carried out a lot of in-house training for our investigators and our legal officers of what is expected of them and how to conduct their work. So I'm quite confident that uh, the skills bit will be there within a short space of time. Give us about three months, we should be talking of a different story. Okay, but so when you come in, you say it was average. Yes. And you are attending to that. Yes, we are attending okay. to that. There, there, there is um, uh, a lot of um, unsubstantiated allegations um, about a lot of uh, cases. We've uh, seen uh, party um, uh, associated youths come up with uh, allegations which were not tested in, in, in court without any evidence. Is that kind of behavior, does it help your work in any way? That kind of behavior doesn't help anybody. As I have said in my press statements, you cannot deal with corruption at a press conference. Corruption must involve evidence. It's not about tarnishing people's names. People have got rights too, you see. So if you do not have any evidence against anyone of corruption, there is no reason to do a press statement and then listing people as corrupt. As the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, we do not support that. We actually call upon anyone who has got allegations of corruption to report the matters for proper investigations and not to go about at a press conference. Are you doing anything against those guys that uh, went on to announce a uh, um, multitude of uh, allegations against uh, people without any, any evidence? Yes, we have called those people to come forward with the evidence that they have. And so far, they have not come forward with the evidence. And uh, if they continue, we will be forced to take action as the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. Because we don't want to look like we are following somebody's script. To, m to me, it looks like they're actually trying to frustrate our work as the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. And I'm not impressed by that at all. The, the, this, this, it, it's, it's tragic in a way because they are minimizing something which should be, which is very important, exactly. which, which society is mm. dealing with mm. uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a big way, which society is, 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 um, uh, finds is affecting the quality of our lives. Exactly. And for people to go out and make allegations without any supporting uh, evidence that 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 is a culture. I think that we we sh we should we should uh, try and discourage. Yeah, we should discourage that that culture 
for political reasons in yes. most instances. Mm -hmm. they, they, we shouldn't fight corruption politically. Corruption fight is apolitical. It's po corruption is a crime. It has got nothing to do with politics. Anyone can con commit corruption, mm -hmm. irrespective of political affiliation. So let's not try and politicize the fight against corruption. Let's fight corruption as a nation. Let's come together as a nation to fight corruption. That's why my message is quite clear to Zimbabwe. Let's come on board as Zimbabweans and assist each other in fighting corruption. Let's not politicize it. Because once we politicize corruption, we trivialize the matter. Corruption is not partisan. It's not partisan at mm. all. It's not partisan. It's color blind. It's color blind. It's party blind. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, Justice, what, what, what would be the key three or so things that you think are fundamental for you being successful in your office? If I'm going to be successful in my office, I'll need support from the public. I'll need the legal framework in place like the Whistleblowers Act, as I've been saying, it is a very crucial piece of information. You can't fight corruption without the witnesses. And this corruption is happening at workplaces, for example. So once somebody come over with some information, basically they will receive a backlash mm. from the organization that they work for. Some will even be fired. Some have been suspended in the past. And it's very crucial that we've got the legal framework to fight corruption. What's the status with that legal framework? Right now it's with the Attorney General's office. Okay. Yes. Well, do you expect um, an improvement in your work once uh, the whistleblower protection and the witness protection is, is in place? Definitely. People will be brave to come forward. They will be confident to bring their matters knowing that no repercussions will come their way. Okay. Um, the, the look, when you look back, let's say five years from now, and what would, what would success look like to you five years down the line? You're writing your report. Um, what will success look like to you? Success to me will look like a reduction in the corruption incidences in the country where we have strong institutions, we need strong institutions like our judiciary, our national prosecuting authority, the police force. We all need them to be strong so that they can deal with whatever comes their way. So once we deal with the scourge of corruption, I think that our country will even be prosperous. We'll start seeing investors coming through to invest in the country as corruption scares away investors. So we, we, we will have a better country five years down the line once we start fighting corruption. And I'm hopeful that we are going to get there. Mm. Mm -hmm. the, the job we've got is a tough job. It is. It's a dangerous job. Dangerous one indeed. Do you feel safe? I feel safe. I am very prayerful. I actually believe in God. I want to believe that I'm not here accidentally, but that uh, this is divine appointment. I'm not afraid of uh, anybody. And I want to believe that Zimbabweans generally are not very violent people. All we are simply trying to do is to remove the scourge of corruption from the country. But I know corruption fights back. It's, it's a dangerous job. Corruption fights back. It fights corruption back. Corruption can be well resourced. If it if can it be well resourced. Back. Are you yes. ready for that? We are going to fights back. It fights back. Yes, that's why we want to be resourced. And uh, we would need to also pick up mm. on our security side. The, the, if, if we're to be candid with ourselves, mm -hmm. corruption has become a subculture in our society. It is. Part of it affects it's the politicians who are mm -hmm. corrupt. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the police who so, are corrupt. Mm -hmm. Judiciary, mm -hmm. there's corruption in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. uh, your common citizens are paying yeah, bribes, bribes for licenses driver's licenses and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Where do you start? Do you have a priority <laughs> list? I mean, <laughs> you know, one would dare to go to the extent of, we're all corrupt. Where are you going to start with us? us? Exactly. Corruption has actually become a way of life in our country. It's actually sad. But what we've done here is uh, we've departmentalized the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission. 
we've got the awareness and publicity department and it's going into the right into the communities to make people aware of the dangers of, of, of corruption and how corruption can destroy a nation. And we are also coming up with preventative methods to try and prevent the occurrence of corruption. So whilst we want to punish the corruption which has happened in the past, it's also our interest to prevent future corruption. So we are working on all those things at the same time. How, how big is that uh, um, uh, the interface with the pu with the public, uh, educating the public about corruption? How big is that unit? That unit, uh, I think, so far it has got about thirty people. Okay, are you happy yes. with uh, the, the staffing level? We are going to decentralize. We are coming up uh, with uh, a, an organogram where we want to decentralize into the regions so that they will communicate our message faster mm. and that they will be with the people mm. within those regions. Mm. And as you are also aware, the Judicial Services Commission is, have opened uh, anti-corruption courts in Mutare, Mashingo, Gweru, Bulawayo. So it's us who are lagging behind and we are not in those cities. How do you interface with the anti-corruption courts? We are supposed to be feeding Okay. Oh, in, into the anti-corruption courts. And the anti-corruption, uh, um, ZRP anti-corruption anti unit, is there a link between you and them? Yes, we want to, in, to, to, to ensure that we do not duplicate our functions. Because if we don't interface, then there's a possibility of us investigating the same matter. Mm. So what we are doing is we are interacting mm. with the police anti-corruption unit. If the police are involved, Justice, mm -hmm. why do you want arresting powers? The police, they, they, they are the police. We are an independent unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission was established after Zimbabwe ratified the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. And it's a requirement under Article 5 that they be an agent which fights corruption. Mm -hmm. So it is a requirement within the UNCAC and the SADC protocol that they be an independent agents to fight corruption. The police cannot handle corruption at the moment, seeing to it that they are also investigating murder, robberies, they're investigating uh, theft. Just think of another crime. So, so the arresting power request is international best practice, is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, as far as uh, uh, anti-corruption is concerned. Are concerned. And some in the world have even gone further to, be, to, to prosecute their own matters. In other countries, they actually prosecute their own uh, Can we expect that in this country? Do we have capacity for that? Is that what we you want to happen? Yes, in future. Okay. But right now, we don't have capacity. Right mm. now, we feed into the National Prosecuting Authority. Yes, and see how it goes. Okay. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go to the NASA report, mm -hmm. which you've looked at. Yes. You know, I, I, wish, I wish I was you, having <laughs> seen what's in there. Um, we've got uh, Minister Priscam Fumiri, who is, bef who is uh, in remand at the present moment. Mm -hmm. Are we to expect any other bombshells? Yes, from the NASA reports, more people will be arrested. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And mm -hmm. of course, you won't tell us who those I people are. I won't tell you who those people are, mm -hmm. because I am bound by ethics. <laughs> but, but there's going to be more but shocks there's coming. But there's going to be that. more shocks coming, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any timelines? When is this going to happen? Are you still investigating? We are still investigating because okay. uh, before arrest, we want to be sure okay. that the persons uh, are likely guilty. You okay. see, you do, we don't want to harass people who are innocent. And also you have uh, had a peep into the Auditor General's uh, report, yes, which was shocking, which <laughs> has been shocking over the past many years and yes. nothing has happened to anybody. Can we expect something different this time? Are we, ex are we to expect you to take action following the, 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 the current Auditor General's report? Yes, we've started following up on the Auditor General's report. I think last week um, we had convictions of uh, persons who were selling drugs from hospitals because we really thought that uh, that was at the people's hearts mm. to find that Paririnya uh, to hospital, for example, they do not have drugs and yet some people are stealing those drugs and selling them on the open market. So those people have now been convicted and are awaiting sentence. So we are following up on the Auditor General's reports. What we've done is we've gone through the reports and we are isolating them into criminal and civil. Where it's civil, 
We just want to refer to our asset recovery mm -hmm. yeah. so that we recover those monies from the organizations and persons mentioned. No if, catch and release? No catch and release. No catch and release. I promise mm -hmm. the nation that. That's, 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 um, that's a good thing to, to, to hear. Uh, crime has become sophisticated. Yes. Um, and I'm delighted to hear you talk about, you know, you requesting uh, technology. Um, how, how ready are you to be able to track high-level international uh, corru corruption that it might Im involve international cartels? Are, are you ready to deal with that? We are still working on that. What we have done at the moment is uh, we are coming up with memorandum of understanding with most countries. At the moment, one with Botswana is ready for signature. We are just waiting for Botswana to tell us when. Mm -hmm. We've requested for a debt. And uh, with, with Zambia, we are drafting a memorandum of understanding. We've actually also engaged uh, international organizations which do tracking. And they are quite keen to come on board to actually help us track where our money is ended up in. So once we find out that we've got money, let's say in Dubai or in UK, then we'll then engage those countries so that we see how we can recover our assets from those countries. Does it look hopeful? Yes, it looks hopeful. It okay. looks hopeful, yes. Okay. The, yes. The, the, you know, corruption is a tax mm -hmm. on the poor. Yes. Um, it, it drives away uh, foreign investors. Mm -hmm. we, have an, we have at the moment a lot of talk about cartels. Cartels within the fuel the sector, industry, yeah. cartels within the forex uh, mm -hmm. market, distorting the market, making people's lives difficult, and crippling the economy. Mm -hmm. Are you looking into that? And if you are, um, what progress are you making? Yes, we are looking into that. We want to leave no stone unturned. But because uh, our investigators are quite busy investigating, uh, we've roped in our intelligence department, which is going ahead of investigation. So we are still waiting for those reports to come through. And, to, and once we look at those reports, we'll then refer the matters to our investigation unit. And then they'll come up with dockets. We really want to break those cartels. Because if we're going to move forward as a country, those cartels need to be broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we, people are going to say um, justice being married to the foreign minister. How are we to believe that justice won't have sacred cows when it comes to dealing with corruption? Well, it's, I'm only married to one person. It's, it's the foreign minister, not to the whole executive. And uh, I do not have any relationship with the executive. I don't move in their circles, and I'm not close to the executive. So I'm not going to be influenced by somebody. And being a judge, I understand what it means to be independent. I take my oath of office seriously. And if you check my record, I've never favored anybody in my dealings. And yet I've been dealing with those cases as a judge on the bench. So you'll be able to push against uh, political interference? Yeah, I can push against political interference. I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, um, I, I asked you about what success is going to look like in, in, in five years. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, as you sit here, you're sounding very confident. Mm -hmm. You're sounding passionate. You are ready for the job. Um, reality does raise head mm -hmm. to push back. Mm -hmm. Will that weigh you down? Not at all. I'm quite passionate to fight corruption. I've been in the field for a long time, and so I will not be worn down. Tell us about the transition from being justice on the bench mm -hmm. to heading mm -hmm. the Anti-Corruption mm -hmm. Commission. How is that? How does that look like? Well, it's just coming to the other world. I'm now going to, my work is now going to be subjected to trial by the judges there. So, yeah, it's quite a, a, a tough time. It will give me pressure because uh, my colleagues will also have to weigh my work. So I will have to perform and give them that quality work that they look for. Mm -hmm. 
Justice, the, the, the Zimbabweans are watching you. Mm -hmm. They're expecting so much, so much from you. Exactly. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity now to address the Zimbabweans on, on this matter of corruption. Okay. What do you want to tell Zimbabweans as far as corruption is concerned and what you're going to do? Yes, I want to tell Zimbabweans that uh, I'm ready to fight corruption. But I cannot fight corruption alone. I need Zimbabweans to come on board so that we fight this corruption together. We fail together as a nation and we succeed together as a nation. So if Zimbabwe is not supportive, if you don't come along and we fight this fight, then we, we, we lose together. So I want to tell the people of Zimbabwe that this is their war, but I've come, uh, I've come as their leader. I'm just leading the process, but I'll need followers. I can't fight it alone. So come through, let's fight this fight together. I won't let you down. What do you expect from the public? From the public, I expect cooperation. I expect those with information to come forward with the information. I expect the witnesses are there in the public. I want them to come up and testify in court and testify boldly so that we can get those convictions that we want. We want to recover the assets from those persons who have robbed the nation of the much wanted resources that we want. I want those members of the public with that information to come forward so that they help me with that evidence and together we recover what is owed to the nation and we put the assets back to the public purse. We also have the mandate to combat corruption in the private sector and I also want the private sector not to offer bribes to the public sector because it takes two to tango and you find that sometimes it's the private sector which actually comes to government and start offering these percentages in companies, they say, give me this and I'll give you 5%. Public, uh, private sector must stop offering bribes and we must go back to having corporate governance and being accountable so that we actually nip this corruption bad. Any messages to politicians? Politicians do not interfere with us. We want to do our job independently and... Uh, you also stop being corrupt and go into politics because you want to save the nation. Don't go into politics because you want to line up your pockets. So it's time to reassess yourselves. And if you got into politics to align your pockets with ill-gotten wealth, it's time to get out of politics. Justice Lois Matanda Moyo, thank you so much. And on behalf of uh, all Zimbabweans who wish to see the scourge of corruption behind us, thank you so much for allowing us into your office. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you.